when it goes when it goes dark, you just have to scream. Does it have to pass code? No. Perfect. So. No, when the screen shuts oh. off, you do have to pass code. Oh, well. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. And if you're new, welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, today we want to hear from you. So we have a couple questions. We're wondering what mammals you have seen in the wild. So if you've been out hiking on the trail or in your backyard, if you've seen any mammals, we know you've seen dogs and cats and horses and cows. We're really curious about wild mammals. And then the second question I have for you is what's the biggest mammal you have seen in the wild? Um, I was lucky enough, the biggest mammal I've seen is a humpback whale off the coast of May, or at Massachusetts in, off of Cape Cod. So if you have seen a mammal in the wild, please let us know. We're going to actually be doing a tally. And so at the end of our live, we're going to take uh, a recording of what you guys have said and seen what is the most common mammal seen. And we're also going to see which one is the most rare one that has been seen. So please, please, please comment. It'd be really cool too if you could find an emoji that represented the mammal that you saw in the wild. Um, our plan today is going to introduce you to some of our taxidermied mammals that we have. And then uh, we'll introduce you to a couple of the mammals that call the Outdoor Learning Center home here. So I have some interesting facts that we've kind of compiled about our taxidermy mammals. Um, but if you guys have any questions about the taxidermy mammals or if you have questions about the mammals that live here at the Outdoor Learning Center, we'd be happy to answer those. We do have a couple of friends that I have reached out to me. So hello, Emily, and hello, Asher. Hope you guys are doing well. And we're going to get started. Um, Jasper, behind the camera, is going to be following me around to our different mammals. So the first one we're going to visit is going to be the black bear. So this is the American black bear. Uh, it's an omnivore. If you guys know what that means, it means eats all kinds of foods, not just meat. Um, this one is actually a donation from a teacher in our district. It came from his dad. Um, it's Mr. Ailey, if you guys know Mr. Ailey. Um, they can live up to 20 years in the wild. They can be uh, up to six feet tall and weigh 600 pounds. Uh, the most, they are the most recognizable bear in North America. They're excellent climbers, and they can also live in mountains and near water. And they're not only black in color, they can be brown, blue, gray, and even white. And they will eat whenever they can. They call them opportunistic, opportunistic eaters. They mostly eat grasses, roots, insects, fish, mammals, and any garbage left behind by humans. They have huge territories. They can live in a lot of places and they hibernate during the winter 
and they live off of body fat. So they will live in their caves or uh, their dens all winter long and not eat. And they, when they're babies, they'll stay with their mom for two full years. So that's the American black bear. Or bear. The next one, you guys know what this is. It is not a beaver, as people sometimes will think. This is actually the North American river otter. It's a carnivore, lives in the water, and they can also live on land. They like to make burrows in, near rivers and lakes and swamps, and even in estuaries is where seawater meets fresh water. They have really cool webbed feet and an awesome tail used for swimming. And their fur is watertight, meaning that they can swim in water and not really get wet. They're part of the weasel family and their favorite food is fish. And sometimes if you're hiking along the water's edge, you might see some weird looking scat or animal poop. It looks kind of black and oily. It might be from a river otter. Take a closer look and you might even see scales from the fish they eat. And when they're two months old, their parents actually will teach their babies to swim. So if you guys can imagine being two months old and learning how to swim in deep, fresh water. The next animal we're gonna see, which thank goodness this one is not alive. You guys probably know what this guy is. You may not have seen him, but you probably can smell him or you can tell when your dog has been close to one. This is a skunk. They are omnivores, kind of like the bear. They'll eat whatever they can. Some people will know that they get uh, into their dog food or cat food that might be left out. They live in a group, if you guys have heard of a group, like a herd of elk, called a uh, surafet, and they can weigh up to 15 pounds, kind of like a cat. They are well known, like I mentioned, for their smell, and it's very hard to remove. I wonder if you guys have had any animals get sprayed by a skunk. Um, it's produced by glands back by the tail, and you can they can actually spray their stink up to 10 feet so you can see how your dog potentially could get smelled by one of them. Um, they like to take over other animals' nests and the females can lay up to 10 babies a year. So you can imagine why there's so many skunks around. And they don't have a lot of predators. As you can imagine, nobody wants to eat them. I do know that great horned owls like to eat them because owls do not have the ability to smell. So that is our skunk. Remember, if you guys have questions or if you've seen a mammal in the wild, make sure you're sharing those. The next one we're going to visit is the coyote. It looks like a dog or a wolf, but it's neither. They are also omnivores, meaning they can eat a lot of stuff, remember. They can live up to 14 years in the wild and they can weigh up to 50 pounds. I have a German Shepherd who doesn't even weigh 50 pounds at home. They can live in a pack, um, and Native Americans include them in a lot of their legends. If you've been to the Outdoor Learning Center, we talk about coyote a lot in our stories. Um, they're very savvy, or mean very smart and clever, and they're really easy to adapt in lots of different habitats. They can run up to 40 miles an hour and have really good vision. Sometimes they're called prairie wolves and they actually have a call that they talk to each other with um, to help gather other coyotes to hunt with. And they can give birth up to 12 babies in the springtime and they're ready to hunt in the fall. We actually had a coyote in our backyard yesterday our dogs were barking like crazy, and I think they were looking for our chickens. How many of you guys have seen coyotes? Next, we're going to the raccoon. This is our taxidermied raccoon. Um, they can live up to three years in the wild. Their group is called a nursery. So like coyotes were in a pack, this is actually a nursery. They can weigh up to 23 pounds. They'll eat just about anything from trash to fresh roadkill or anything they can catch out in the wild. You, can, you guys can see their front paws. Maybe Jasper can zoom in. They kind of look like human hands. So they're really good at opening things, prying things open. They can kind of move their hands just like you and I move their hands. 
Um, they like to eat crawdads, frogs, and other aquatic creatures too. And they're also nocturnal. So like they come out at nighttime. People often think that all they do is eat garbage. But that's just because garbage is available. They could also eat mice, insect, or even bird eggs. They like to live in small dark places and they can have up to seven babies in the fall. Um, there are seven species, or several species of raccoons, and a lot actually can live on tropical islands. So we're gonna walk over to the bobcat now. So these taxidermy animals were mostly donated from people who hunted them. Um, they help us educate kids. We do have some live mammals that we're gonna be sharing in a little bit. Ellen asked that question. But we're gonna start with the taxidermied ones. So this is a bobcat. They are a carnivore, and you guys might know that means they eat meat, and they can live up to 12 years in the, or in the wild. They are also nocturnal, which makes it hard for them to be seen in the wild. One time when Jasper was a baby, we actually saw one run across the road up north near Chewila. It was the coolest thing I saw because it bounded across the road like with total ease. They uh, like to dart on prey and they're really elusive. They like to live in trees or wooded areas and they're about twice as big as a house cat. This is a very young bobcat that we have that was donated. Um, they can pounce, like I was mentioning, they like to jump on their, their prey up to 10 feet so an average size man is about six feet. So if you can imagine what 10 feet of a pounce might look like. They live alone um, and they can have litters up to six kittens and they'll stay with their mom for about a year before going to live on their own. And in North America, they think that we have about a million bobcats living. That's an estimate. We did have a question what a carnivore is. And the carnivore is actually an animal that eats only meat. So our bear was an omnivore that liked to eat lots of different things. And this bobcat here liked to eat only meat. So we're gonna meet the beaver next. So in, on, in our neck of the woods, we have two different types of beaver. One, like this one, is a North American beaver, and also the Eurasian beaver. They like to live near animal, or near water, sorry, and they are actually called a colony when they live together, kind of like the herd that we were talking about before, or the nursery. They can live up to 24 years in the wild. So that's pretty old for an animal. And they can weigh up to 60 pounds. So even bigger than a coyote beavers get. They're famous for creating dams. And you guys may have seen them before where they flood out areas. I know up at our lake cabin, there's always a uh, kind of a fight going on with the beavers because they can change the water level. They're actually really good at changing uh, ecosystems and turning them back to wetlands, which is good for our world because they help, wetlands help us clean water. Um, they, at the Outdoor Learning Center, if you guys ever come, they actually have, uh, we built a beaver lodge. That's kind of a replica of what it would look like. They are located usually out in the middle of ponds, so they can swim underneath in secret openings. Um, they are rodents, so like mice, they're rodents. And they can swim underwater for about 15 minutes. They have webbed feet and a big, huge tail that helps them paddle through the water. One time I saw a beaver and it warned me by slapping its tail that I had gotten too close. Somebody, Kev asked how long are beaver teeth? Maybe Jasper, you can zoom in there. The cool thing about rodents is that they are always growing their teeth. So you guys know that beavers like to chew on wood. Some of that is because they wanna use it for lodging, but if they didn't do that, their teeth would grow and grow and grow. Maybe you guys have rodent pets like guinea pigs like we have here. You have to supply something for them to chew. 
their teeth will actually get infected if they can't chew things to wear them down. They can swim up to five miles an hour, which is pretty quick for an animal. They even swim under ice in the winter time. And they have really cool fur that allows them to stay warm and dry, kind of like the river otter we talked about before. It has a natural oil to it that allows it to be waterproof, kind of like ducks. If you guys have seen ducks, they have uh, oil on their feathers as well. That's the beaver. We're really excited about beavers here at the Outdoor Learning Center because we are actually working with the Lands Council potentially to have a beaver project here where we would actually house some beavers that are being nuisances until they're able to be relocated. So make sure you check back with us on that project with the Lands Council. So we're gonna go see our next animal. We also had a question about how many mammals we have here. We have a guinea pigs, we have hedgehogs, and we have a chinchilla that we're gonna be sharing with you guys soon. So anybody know what this is? Some people might say moose, maybe an elk, maybe a deer. We get a lot of that common. We actually, given some chance here, people thinking it's actually a uh, caribou. If you guys have ever heard of a caribou, maybe you guys know reindeers. This is what reindeers are. Um, they're part, this is part of the deer family. They have huge hooves that are used for living really far north where there might be not very much grass or things to eat. So they can dig through snow or dig through rocks and things like that. Um, they can even swim really well in water with those big hooves. Uh, it allows that, the hoof allows them to scoop up like a shovel under snow to search for uh, food. And the hooves are really sharp so they can actually walk really well on rocks or ice. They trek north in the summer, up, and up, up far from here and it's one of the largest animal migrations on earth. They travel more than 600 miles along these routes. They spend the summer eating grasses and mushrooms and plants in the tundra, if you guys have ever heard of tundra. Um, and they begin to move south in the winter. And over a year, they have probably migrated about 1,600 miles. So 1,600 miles this animal will migrate just on their feet. They're hunted by indigenous people uh, throughout their range and woodland caribou are actually endangered but other caribou are not endangered and if you guys know the word endangered it means it's one step from going extinct so their habitat um, sometimes threatens that so this is the caribou the next one we are going to is the bighorn sheep Anybody guess why they're called a big horn sheep? I'm sure you guys can see their horns. Uh, all of these animals that you've seen that have had antlers or horns actually are pretty cool. They're made out of keratin, kind of like your and I's hairs and hair and fingernails. Um, big horn sheep don't lose their horns, but the deer, uh, like the caribou, actually will lose their antlers every year and grow them back. These guys are pretty cool. They use their horns when they're looking for a mate. Um, they actually can weigh up to 30 pounds. Just the horns there can weigh 30 pounds. And they can actually run 20 miles an hour. So imagine if you're looking for a mate and the way that you guys can find your mate is to slam your head at 20 miles an hour into each other. You can imagine how loud that is. Um, if you guys get a chance, go on the internet and look up a video of these guys looking for a mate and fighting. It's pretty intense. It sounds like a car crash when they hit. You guys may have heard of rams. Um, there's lots of Colorado State mascot is the ram. And maybe you've heard of NFLT's team, the LA Rams. And there's also the Dodge Ram truck. So uh, these guys live up on rocky hillsides. They have really cool feet, kind of like the caribou. Um, it, they're textured, which is kind of like bumpy feet and allows them to climb on rocks. And in some of the videos, you can see their babies are pretty impressive when they are climbing on those mountainsides. Lambs are born during springtime, so baby rams and lamb. Um, and the kind of a predator they might have when they're babies are golden eagles. So they might swoop down on the hillside and grab one of the babies. 
And the Rams, the males actually hang out in bachelor groups. You guys may have heard of a bachelor, not bachelor the show. Um, and females travel in a herd with other young rams that haven't made it yet. So that's our bighorn sheep. And we're gonna now meet some of our animals from the Outdoor Learning Center. So this is our hedgehog. We call her Gussie. And maybe, Stella, can you grab the glove and show us her nose? These guys got their names because they like to roam around garden hedges. Uh, they make little pig noises, hence the name hedgehog. They are pretty shy. Um, if you guys get a hedgehog as a pet, you have to, you see how Stella has a glove there? Eventually they will get pretty friendly if you work with them a lot. Um, and they have cute little noses if you guys can see it. They are nocturnal. So we always talk about Hedgie is not the best pet because she does sleep all day and then she likes to roam in her wheel all night. And they kind of poop at night. There's 17 species of hedgehogs in the world and none of them are na native to North America. So these guys aren't something you would see roaming around anywhere in our neighborhoods. They can range in size and color, and they have really poor eyesight. So they use mostly, if you guys can guess which scents they use, they use their sense of smell. And they, really interesting fact is they are mostly immune, which means it doesn't affect them, to snake venom. So a venomous snake couldn't stun, stun Hedgy with a bite. I think she's pretty cute. We feed our Hedgy, Hedgy mostly some vegetables, cat food, and she likes to eat live mealworms too. We do have to give her baths, and we have to be really careful with her blanket because she gets the threads kind of worn, or they get kind of stuck in her uh, pokey things there. Uh, they're not the not the easiest pet, so if you guys want a hedgehog, make sure you are paying attention before getting one. Our next friend we're going to meet is our chinchilla. This is Freckles. You guys can see her freckles on her ears. So they're also a rodent, kind of like the beaver, much smaller. They're actually native to the Andy Mountains in South America. And the color of their fur can be white, gray, black, beige, or silver. And you can see that Freckles is gray. They, um, we can't give them her a normal bath like you and I would do or even hedgy. So she actually has to get a dust bath. Um, their, their fur gets kind of oily, so we give her a dust bath. Basically, we lock her in the bathroom. She has a little house full of volcanic ash. And then we let her run around the bathroom. She rolls in there, comes out, jumps all over the walls, all over the toilet. She has uh, footprints all over the bathroom. Um, they have the thickest fur of any land animal. And they can have 50 hairs growing out of one follicle. So that's kind of how our hairs grow out of our heads and arm out of follicles. She can have 50, which is crazy. And one square centimeter, which is tiny, 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 if you guys think about a ruler with a centimeter, can have 20,000 hairs on a chinchilla. They're really good at jumping. Stella can tell you that she's very good at jumping. And they can actually get up to six feet off the ground. And so when we go in the bathroom to clean up her footprints, we can find them up on the wall covered in ash. She's pretty awesome. And Chin Chin's about seven years old. And we're going to meet the guinea pigs now. So this is a guinea pig. And maybe Stella, can you take off the books so we can actually see them? We just got these guys from a friend who donated them. They're pretty shy right now. Um, 
They are also a rodent, so you guys can kind of see their face is kind of shaped similar to the beaver. They're also known as cavies. Uh, you guys can see the whiskers and ears there. They come in all different colors. And the funny thing is, is they're not from New Guinea or Guinea, and they're not even really a pig. They are a very popular pet. Anybody have guinea pigs out there? They are a very easy pet to have. Um, they do have some health things as they get older, so you have to be careful. Uh, they were domesticated, so turned into pets about 3,000 years ago when Spanish conquistadors came from Europe and brought them back. Um, they are in Germany called little sea pigs, which is pretty cute. And in France, they're called rabbits. We love our guinea pigs here. The reason we love them is they're so vocal and they really kind of like to be around humans. So if they hear any sort of plastic rattling, they instantly think it's feeding time. So I know that we have some questions that we want to answer. And we also want to know what you guys have seen for wild animals and what the biggest one you guys have seen is. I just want to review this chart. So we've been talking about how animals are broken up into different groups, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and birds. So far we've covered birds, reptiles, and mammals. So just to remind you guys that mammals, their body is covered in fur, and you can think about reptiles, they're covered in scales, and birds' bodies are covered in feathers. Mammals actually nurse their young. They're the only animal in the groups to do that. Reptiles do not nurse their young, and neither do birds. Uh, mammals are warm-blooded, so like you and I, they uh, will have, we have a fever if our temperature is not the same, but reptiles and um, other animals are cold-blooded, and birds are actually warm-blooded like us. Mammals will give live birth, and reptiles usually lay eggs, and birds do lay eggs. And mammals breathe like you and I do, with lungs, as do reptiles, as do birds. Next time we're gonna talk about amphibians, and they're pretty cool because they have some different characteristics that we mammals don't have. Um, we are gonna do something cool. On Wednesday, it's actually Earth Day, so April 22nd. We're gonna log on again at 11 on Wednesday for a reading of our favorite book here called The Lorax. So if you like Dr. Seuss and you like to read the Lorax, we'll be filming an outdoor show to tell you guys um, all about the Lorax. And I know Tiffany is tallying how many animals you guys have seen, so she's gonna give me a list here. Please remember to log on to our, U or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stella, my daughter, has been making some fun crafts. I'm gonna share this week this mammal. This is our hippopotamus she has made. So I know we've been using lots of toilet paper at home. All you're gonna need is a toilet paper roll and some paint. If you have googly eyes, that'd be great. Um, and markers work as well. So make sure you subscribe. Stella's gonna upload that video. And then next week, uh, or later this week, we're actually gonna post what you can do to help for Earth Day. So make sure you log on to our Facebook page and we'll give you some simple ideas that you guys can do. Um, or maybe you guys can share ideas that you've already done for Earth Day because around here we think that every day is Earth Day and we really want you guys to remember that while we're staying home. Um, I want to thank again Jasper for my son for technology support. Stella has been helping with animals. Tiffany has been tallying our responses and answer, or looking for questions. And Robbie down in Boise has been uh, replying to your guys' comments and helping us come up with all the interesting facts. So Tiffany, what do we have for a tally? She's gonna hand it to me here. So the biggest animals, oh, I'm sorry, Lizzie in Canada. You wanna convince your mom to do to get a chinchilla. Well, here's what I suggest. I would, what? No, I would, my daughter says no. I would do your research, like really look in and interview people who have had chinchillas. Um, they, if you're home and you can take care of her and handle them, then that's a great pet to have, but I really would do research. And mom, uh, I always make my kids make some sort of a presentation before they want to get an animal so I can make sure they are ready to take care of it. Uh, chinchillas are hard because they're kind of messy. So if you have a nice place, uh, 
that won't you won't mind getting messy and um, make sure you have the right materials and for her diet and everything. So the biggest animal seen, it's close close between a whale. We had five people have seen a whale and four that have seen a moose. And we haven't talked about moose today, but that's a, definitely an awesome animal to see. And so our rare animals, which I'm pretty sure is probably my father-in-law, thinks he has seen a Sasquatch, or maybe he's a Sasquatch. Um, I know our friend up north, Ashley, saw a flying squirrel at her bird feeder the other day. So we have to give a shout out to Ashley. And then a muskrat, which really is a cool animal to see. Uh, often you think it's a beaver or a river otter, but they kind of hang out under our lake, um, lake docks. You want to say hi to anybody today, Tiffany? Oh, we got a whole list. Woo. Oh, we saw Ashley, yes. Hello, Hazen, we miss you. You got to see a moose, huh? Ellen got to see an orca. Valerie got to see a deer. Shane got to see two deer fighting, which was probably pretty cool or scary. Uh, Micah saw a whale. Uh, Stephanie Moose Coyotes. Eli saw a whale in Hawaii. Micah saw humans. That's pretty funny. Ari saw a moose. Ooh, Sandy saw a moose in their yard. That could be terrifying. I know our friend Lori likes to see them in her yard. They like to nibble on our apple tree. B saw orcas. Wild horses from G. That would be really cool. Kesslin saw a humpback whale. Brad and DZH saw a beaver. Stephanie saw an elk. Very cool, Stephanie. I'm wondering if you saw one elk or more. Were they in a herd? Tammy saw a fox. Oh, Trammy, sorry. I have fox earrings on today. That's pretty cool. Lincoln, Rhett, Gavin, ha Hannah saw a beaver. Uh, Emma, Isaac saw marmot. Is that a mammal? Yes, marmots are mammals. We have lots of marmots here in Spokane. In fact, it's our unofficial uh, mascot here in Spokane. They're out right now whistling along the trails if you guys get to go out. Wolverine. That sounds terrifying to me, but super cool to see. If you guys get a chance to look up a Wolverine on the internet, that'd be pretty cool. Whoa, Jamie, your list is huge. I'm going to pick my favorite thing. Ooh, a whale. Very cool, Jamie. So remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel for the craft. And if you want to share this with your friends, um, we miss all of you guys. Please make sure you're staying safe and staying home. Get outside to see animals. Uh, we have a prize that we want to offer. So Stella, I would really like to see if anybody has created uh, your art craft. So if you could email us at the OLC info at WVSD.org. It's actually going to be on the craft channel. You guys can check that out. And we have a special four prizes we can send out to anybody that sends a picture of the craft they've created. Remember, Wednesday, sign on for a reading at 11 o'clock of the Lorax. Keep shooting your questions because we can keep answering. Remember, we're bored. We miss you guys. We have lots of time to answer questions. Thanks for signing on. We'll see you next Wednesday or Friday. Bye.